What's going on my Centrionic Galaxy, it's the Central Man here, so back again with another episode of the MCU Movie Review Series. So in this episode, I'm reviewing the final movie of Phase 2 of the MCU, that is Ant-Man. This movie was released in June of 2015, one month after the release of Age of Ultron. I covered that movie last week. This movie, um, it was in the middle. I didn't really see the movie at the time in cinemas. I was not interested. I didn't see the trailer of this film. It didn't really blow me away. Um, I saw it again on television. This would be one month, uh, not one month, uh, one year later in 2016. Seen it. I, I kind of got meh. Seen it again the second and third time. That would be like in like, 2018, 2017. Um, it's, my opinion is still the same. And then I watched it a, a recent time. I watched it in, I got the Disney Plus app. Seen the movie again. And it didn't blow me away, but I think it was a good movie, but not a great one. Wasn't terrible. Wasn't fantastic. It didn't blow me away. Um, this is just a typical standard superhero movie. Nothing special, um, yeah. I think it's the first time that Marvel movie, this is way back in 2015, that's the first time they produce a movie month after month since oh, 2008. You know, they did the um, Iron Man movie first, that was released in, was it, um, April, May of that year, then Hulk in June, or May or June of that year. It's, I can't remember, I covered those movies way back in January of this year, go and check it out, um, yeah, um, Ant-Man, um, yeah, like I say, it wasn't terrible, wasn't fantastic, it didn't blow me away, but it was just a standard superhero movie, it was fun to watch, and also the CGI effects in this film, it was good, it, it I know it's not real, but it never came out, uh, fake with the ants, and also with the fight sequence, you know, it came off, uh, believable, not fake, anyway, um, so let's talk about the cast of this movie. Um, the the star of this movie we got Paul Rudd as Scott Lang, aka Ant Man. Um, his performance as Scott Lang was good. I'm not familiar with Paul Rudd. The only movie with Paul Rudd was Anchorman. You know the 2004 movie, not the 2040 movie. I've seen a little bit of the uh, the sequel to Anchorman, but um, not. The whole of it, I can't really get my opinions on that sequel. I don't think that it did do that well. I see the 2004 movie Anchorman, you know, The Legends of Ron Burgundy. Um, I think he played in a lot of comedy, less action. Yeah, this movie was, you know, comedy and a little, a little bit of comedy and action. Um, I think it was a good cast choice to have Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. He was in good shape in this movie. There was a, a shirtless scene, you know, fighting with, you know, Hope. Uh, we'll get to the actress playing uh, Hope uh, a little bit shortly. He was ripped. Um, he wasn't super big. He's not like uh, like Chris Hemsworth or Chris Evans or, you know, Chris Pratt. Fucking hell, how many Chris's or The Rock? No, he's, um, he's a little bit skinny, but he's got a bit of abs. You know, he kind of like took it seriously. You know, worked his ass off to getting shaped for the film. Um, I'm gonna butcher this woman's name. Uh, the actress playing Hope. Uh, Eveline, I think it's called. Uh, Evangeline. Yeah, that's that's her name. Uh, Evangeline Lily as Hope. Uh, Pim. She was she was good in this movie. She wasn't she wasn't like a bitch character, but she was kind of like fine in this movie, pl playing the daughter of. Uh, Hank Pym, and then, by the way, uh, Hank Pym played by l really one of the, the established actors in Hollywood, that is Michael Douglas. Yeah, Michael Douglas as Hank Pym or Henry Pym. He plays well. This movie is focused on the, um, the predecessor or basically the successor of Hank Pym as the uh, Ant-Man. It's not like a typical origin movie like... Hank is going to be Ant-Man first and then Scott. No, they focus on, you know, who's filling the boots of Hank Pym as the next Ant-Man. You know, and, and, and Hank Pym uh, picks Scott to be his successor, his predecessor. Not predecessor, but successor, I'm trying to say. So, anyway, um, we got uh, Michael Penner as Louise. He fucking was funny. He was kind of like the... 
the the bu bullet point of this movie. You know, I like his storytelling. He's kind of like say it in the in the third person. If you go and check it, just type in like Louis' storytelling. It's really really funny. I kind of laughed. It's just kind of I kind of like you know. I think he's also part done a lot of comedy in his career. Um, you know, it's like I say, it's good cast choice. You know, Michael Penner was good, and he also had his cronies. You know. You know, he was kind of like, you know, he was, you know, because, you know, because Penna, Pen, you know, not Penna, um, Louise and Scott has, like, because the former cell mates, and also, when Scott was released from jail, he had the, the scar around his, um, I think it was in his eyebrow, and they said, well, he got that scar, um, I think that, he was fighting this, uh, big black dude called Peaches, you know, Peaches, give me a leaving present, oh, yeah, and, and Penna says, last year, you're not Penna, but, you know, Penna's character, you know, uh, Louis says, uh, oh, yeah, last year, you gave me a scar, you know, I kind of like the character, you know, he's, you know, came off funny, not annoying, you got, you, one of his cronies, one's, like, a black dude, he called Scott a pussy, this was in the, uh, apartment scene, Louis' apartment scene, this was after he got fired, because he was, Working in the ice cream um shop, he was uh, you know, he got this idiot um customer. He was asking for something hot and said we don't sell it. And he got yeah he got fired. The boss was okay. He still got fired because he had to because no one wants to yeah. If he let him work in the ice cream shop, he people will, will boycott the shop because because one of the employees isn't a, a, a criminal. So. Yeah, and it, yeah. It's, I think the Dave for that was the black dude called him a pussy because you know he's stuck because Scott Lang is a criminal. He's a cat burglar because he he doesn't like smash you know several burglars smashing houses. He's just doing it quietly. Also, you got this Kurt. This Kurt, you know, is basically Russian. He speaks in a Russian accent. It's kind of good, you know. The 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 crew, you know, Lang Lang's Louise crew. It's funny to watch. Um, it's good to, yeah, it's good to see the crew, you know, you know, Louise, uh, Kurt and, D and Dave, I think that's the, yeah, the name of the black dude. Anyway, um, let, let's get to the rest of the, the cast of this mov movie. The villain in this movie is, um, you got, uh, what's his name, Darren Cross, aka Yellow Jacket, played by Corey Stoll. Like the character, the, my, my first exposure to Corey Stoll was in... A TV show called The Strain. This was like way back in the mid 2010s. You know, 2014. I think it ended in 2016 or 17. Never, I never got the chance to see the third season. Can't remember his name of his character of the show. He's basically a scientist. He got, he's a bit of a, he got a bit of a drink problem. You know, um, he was okay in in the TV show, but in this film, he was underrated. He was kind of like this. Distrain, was it a uh, distrain delusional guy? He's basically, I don't say tom, uh, torturing animals. He kind of like he has a grudge with Hank because he create this. Um, I think he call it the um, the pain particles. Um, he wants to create. He wants to do his version of his own. He kind of forced Hank out of his own company because he owns a company called Pintech. Um, and also, yeah, he was, like, he's kind of, like, testing experience with animals, with lambs, you know, with trying to, because he's, you know, the pin particles, basically, he shrinks. This is the whole bully point of this movie, is shrinking. They focus much on the Earth in this Marvel movie, because so far, the Marvel Universe, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe started in 2008, you know, seven years. The focus on you know mythology, your know, history and sci-fi, you know you got like um you know you got Thor, Thor you know Thor you know Thor one and two they they combine a little bit of sci-fi and Viking mythology, Captain America one they focus on history you know with World War two, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy the first movie was a bona fide sci-fi movie this movie is focused on the Earth. Uh, I kind of, you know, it's kind of like going in that direction. It's not just, uh, oh, it's sci-fi, it's proper sci-fi. No, it's just, it's down on Earth, like, down on Earth stuff like Iron Man and Hulk. And, yeah, this movie is, it's, it's uh, uh, the Earth. You know, if you watch, like, uh, was it, National Geographic uh, shows. Um, anyway, um, so we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, Corey Stoll, yeah, he's, yeah, the yeah, he's focused on 
matching, you know, Hank's uh, experiment called the particle, was it the pin particle? Yeah, he's testing on animals like sheep, not sheep, but lambs, and he turned one of the lamb into like this blob, and he also turned his one of his uh, work colleagues, Frank, into a blob in the bathroom. Uh, this was an early portion in the first act of the film, and he got it right, he kind of shrunk, managed to shrunk a sheep. You know, a lamb. It is the same thing, sheep and uh, sheep and lamb. You know, a lamb is a bit, a little bit, a little bit taller than a sheep. Um, he's yeah, you know, a bit cruelty. That kind of like happened in real life. You got some scientists, you know, test dangerous experiments with animals. You know, I think the Russians sent a dog out into space. That's back a bit evil. Anyway, so I think that's it. I think I covered. I think I covered most of it. Um. We got Bobby Cavanaugh, I think that's his name, or Cannaval. Uh, he plays Paxson. He's more of a dick in this movie because he, he married. I don't say he married uh, Scott's wife. He kind of like in his relationship with Scott's wife and becoming a stepfather or a father figure to Cassie. Um, by the way, the girl plays Cassie. She came came off more cute because some people don't like little kids in TV shows and movies. They turn out to be bratty. For me, that's not the case. Not all the time. You know, I like uh, Lucas's sister in Stranger Things. You know, she came off funny. Cassie, she was cute at the time. I think in the first movie, she was about five years old. In um, in the second movie, you know, Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm guessing about eight to ten years old. And then in Endgame, she came off as a teenager. I think in the in the new movie, there'll be... I think it's a movie in next year. She'll probably be in her 20s, so... Anyway, um, so I think that's it. And also we got cameo appearances. You got Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter. This was kind of like in, the, the this was the start of this movie. This was like in 1989. This was like in the late 80s, you know, because Hank kind of butt heads with S.H.I.E.L.D. He punched this Mitchell Carson guy in the face. He appeared in the movie. He was working with uh, Cross. He stole the yellow tube. And never saw again. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit shortly. But yeah, yeah. Haley Atwell as Peggy Carter. You know, she was kind of in her like 60s, 70s. Because we haven't saw that character. You know, in you know she appeared in Captain America 1. Uh, Captain America 2. Um, in this movie. And then funny that, she will die in the next movie. Civil War. You know, that was a time traveling sequence. Also, you got uh, John Slattery as Howard Stark because uh, you, because you know you know P Peggy from the War. Anyway, um, it's good to see cameo appearances. And also, we got a cameo appearance of Anthony Mackie as the Falcon. That was a good fight scene in the Avengers headquarters. You know, he said, "Who are you, Ant Man? Ant Man?" You know, he said he wants the technology. He's thought, you know, you know, Falcon, you know, understand, but instead he's trying to arrest, um, Falcon, uh, so, no, Falcon's trying to arrest, um, Ant-Man, you know, Scott, in the fight outside the Avengers, um, compound, stole, because he wants to stole the tech, he said, I want the tech, I'm, I'm here for the tech, I, only for a few days I'll return it, we're superheroes, you know that stuff, I know. And also, yeah, it's only a cameo prince of um, of Falcon. You know, he appeared in the he appeared in the uh, the Louise storytelling bit and the post credit scene. I'll get to that a little bit later on. Yeah, it's a good fight. I think like Anthony Mackie did appear in comedy. He appeared in Pain and Gain, the movie with Mark Wahlberg uh, and The Rock. Wahlberg, yeah, well, I said Berg. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg and The Rock. You know, Marky Mark. And you know, you know, it was a bodybuilding comedy about drugs. I've seen it. I think I've kind of seen it. You know, um, it's a funny fight. It was a bit ridiculous, but at the same time, it was funny at the same. It was funny and silly at the same time. I think. Uh, I think that's it. I think. Yeah, that was on the. That was on the the comedy. Uh, not cast. That's the only cast. Um, I talk about. Um, as cameo. So we'll get to the post credit scene a little bit. A little bit later on. Anyway, so yeah, the car, yeah, the the yeah, the Darren Cross uh, character, I think he's underrated in the MCU. Yeah, he's a bit forgettable because he only he's there for a cup of coffee. You never see him ever again. But he play he portrays that character down well. He's a bit delusional, to strange. You know, he he wants he wants. I I, I thought he's gonna take um. Hanks' formula, you know, the um the pin particle, but instead he wants to copy his own particles. He kicked him out. He made, he kinda of turned his own daughter against him, kicked him out of his own company. He managed to success doing his own version of the uh, the particle. 
I think when Hope, Hope said it in you know the the confront kind of confronting you know because um, the plan to take the yellow jacket off um of Cross that's really you know Hank Scott and Hope's plan to take the the yellow jacket off him you know that's the suit and I'm guessing like Cross knows the whole thing and also he shot um his um predecessor in the shoulder that's Hank and Hope said like um. The particles messing with his brains. I don't know. They didn't really fle flesh out his character. They didn't give a time about his character. How he became this strange. It's not like. Yeah maybe he's just like good from the beginning. And then his ego starts to bloom. And then he got kind of drift away. And also. The relationship between Hope and Hank in this movie. um, Is a bit. It's a love and hate relationship. It's kind of like. They're kind of butt heads. They're kind of like not on good terms because over their mom you know and also they bring up their mom that, that set up that kind of plant the seeds of Ant-Man and the Wasp the move, movie in 2018 um you know because there was a, a flashback sequence when they didn't they're in the mission they're trying to disassemble a bomb and then basically her mom basically took a an ultimate sacrifice she kind of like shrunk into they gone into the what's it called the quantum realm and you know, you know, the the character Stoll did not die. He basically got sucked into the quantum realm. I don't think we'll see. It's not the last time we we'll see, um, Darren Cross, Yellow Jacket. He might come back at um, the third movie. I'll get to it a little bit later on. So he, the the her mom kind of sacrificed herself. I think it's called. I think her name, her, the character name of Janet Van Dale. That's um, Hank's wife. And um, that will play by Michelle Pfeiffer. I'll I'll, I'll tell you more when I when I review Ant Man and the Wasp. That will be you know that'll be like the third or fourth final movie of Phase Three because okay we're not at Phase Three yet. Anyway, so he you know she made the sacrifice. Yeah yeah yeah. You know, um, Evangel Evangelili's um character. You know she kind of got emotional, knows the truth because I think in the car scene with. Her and Scott said about, like, you know, she told Scott, like, Hank put her in a boarding school because she wants to wear the suit, the Ant-Man suit, and uh, Hank says no. I think the reason why, it's not like she, uh, like, he hates her daughter because she wants to protect her daughter because he doesn't want her daughter to be on the same situation as her mother, you know. Like, they tell her, like, that, explain her acting like she kind of died, but in reality, she didn't die. She went to the, I think she got sucked in the quantum, was the quantum well. Uh, realm and also she you she appeared in Ant-Man and the Wasp the movie in 2018 like I said played by Michelle Pfeiffer so so uh, the heist thing was good you know I like the other uh, crew a crew with um Louise David Kurt he was kind of good Kurt, Michael Penn is funny he beat, I think he beat up the um the guard you know they're in this room with the um with the um electrical things and says uh, who are you? You know the boss. Tell me to secure this area. I am the boss. He knocked out the bot. He knocked out his the guy, the big security boss. He also beat up the guy with a suit. I think it was another bodyguard. He got bitten by the um the ants, and knocked him off. Uh, knocked him out. Um, anyway. Um, and also yeah, the CGI effects with the ants were good. And also, uh, Scott had this um bonding connection with this ant call. He called it Anthony. You know Anthony, and also I thought that was the same ant from the end scene. The end uh, cr scene from the movie, the same movie. In, they were having dinner. You had uh, Paxson, Maggie, that's uh, Scott's wife, and Cassie. And Cassie's feeding the ant uh, food. I thought that was Anthony. Anthony. Unfortunately, the ant got killed off in the, because because Scott was going after the yellow jacket, and Cross kind of shot uh, some uh, uh, was it blanks. He kind of hit instead of hitting Scott, he hit hits Anthony instead. Instead, and you see the wing, not the body. And also, I think the um, also he call it. I think they call it Anton in the um, the next movie. And that and that creature, I don't know. I think it was a wasp or something. That that creature made an ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> What's the next movie? You know, Ant Man Three is gonna be. He's, he call it. I think it's called Anton Anthony. Maybe uh, Antonio. We don't know. Because the movie was released in 2022. Anyway, so... The fight scene between Yellow Jacket and Ant-Man was good. They're fighting on the top of a Thomas the Tank Engine. 
and it doesn't look CGI. It was it looks like photographic, but not CGI. And also the funny part when he has the he has these type of pads, and it it able's to shrink or make it big. It made the uh, Tom of the Tank engine big, and that was <laughs> that was like cool to see. that was um that was funny. I kind of popped. And also the amp went big, and also it ran towards down the stairs over Paxson, ran out of the house, and then you got I think he's um. Uh, Paxson's partner, a uh, uh, cop partner, says that's a messed up looking dog. And it's not really a dog; it's an ant, a phone, uh, really a living, breathing ant. Yeah, it was a. It's not Anthony because Anthony has wings. This is just a normal ant, and uh, made it as its pet. Yeah, Cassie's just a beautiful. Wo uh, not I almost say a beautiful woman. You know, she's a a gorgeous kid. You know, you know. I think like it never came off. You know, annoying. She came off like a little like a doll you almost have, you know, a respectable daughter, you know, she's not a brat, she's not annoying, she's just fine for what it is, um, so, <clears throat> I like the, f I like the training montage, how Scott, um, becomes the Ant-Man, like, every time she's trying to get through the, uh, the key door, you can end up, like, crashing through the, not through the door, but, like, kind of, like, kind of slam onto the door, couldn't do it, kind of, like, you hear the massive thud on the door, and also the fight scene with, you know, you, it, I know it's a training scene between him and Hope. You know, the punching, show you punch, you say, you, it's all about punching, it's like, I've been punching since prison. He punched Hope, Hope punching back, I kind of popped, you know, laugh. And also he locked Scott in MMA moves, you know, in the arm bar, and the, and the, I think it was a triangle choke. Um, you know, he's training how to fight, you know. And also... And it pro in this movie, it proves that ants, you know, bugs are not really, they're just people. Like, the typical phrase, I have to quote uh, Bruce, you know, it's the shot from Fighting Nemo. Fish is our friend, not food. It's similar to these ants, these creatures, they're not just just bugs, they're just people like you and me. Um, anyway, um, that's it. I think that's, yeah, I think that's it. I think there's, this is a movie, it's not to talk about that much because it's not really a Martin Point movie. Um anyway, the the casting character was part I think it was a head former head development of Shield. You never saw that character ever again. Um he, I think he took the yellow tube after he still got covered in bugs and never seen again. I don't think he paid in the se the sequel. He probably like got arrested I don't know. I think they're trying to tease a plant the seeds like that person could be show up in um the second movie, you know with the um the yellow, I think you, you got like uh, Cross's version of the pro the particle. Unfortunately, they tr they changed plans. The great example like with um Samuel Stearns, you know he's you know after you know the you know after like um you know Blonsi Blonsi became abomination, and then you know you got like uh, Stearns' head starting to swell. He almost become the leader. Unfortunately, you know you got the you got, you, got, you had Edward Norton put heads with the director of that movie, and yeah, they changed plans. You know, you know, you thought they was gonna lead up to a payoff, set up to a sequel. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You know, they, sometimes they do that. You know, they they thought they plan seeds. You know, for the next installment. Unfortunately, they changed plans in in the last minute, going to that different direction. So. Anyway, the uh, the character of yeah, like I say, uh, Darren Cross, Yellow Jacket is way better than Ghost. Ghost was, I think, it was a bit meh, just meh. And same as uh, was it Lawrence? Uh, was it was it La Lawrence Fishburne uh, character? You know the guy from the Matrix. He's a bit meh to me. He was Perry White in you know in in, the, in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. You know I, I'll explain it when I review Ant Man and the Wasp. And spo speaking to the post credit scene. The post credit scene um in this movie um we got the we got the wasp outfit um yeah Hulk Hulk Pen you know he's not she's not the wasp in this first movie I don't know why they did that I think I have to wait until the second movie um and also her hairstyles completely changed because in the first movie her hair is a little bit short and then in the second movie her her hair is long you know and also yeah she had the um. Uh, yeah, the the yeah yeah. Hank said it like her, him and her mother like work on the suit. Her mother never got a chance to wear the suit, and basically Hank says those words, "Let's finish." And um, you know, and Hope says, "It's damn time." And 
yeah, we, yeah, it's yeah, it's planting seeds of Ant Man and the Wasp, and also there's a number one. Uh, I watched another post credit scene. This, um, let's talk about this one good post credit scene that was setting up a future movie from 2018. You know, Ant Man and the Wasp that was released. That was released after Infinity War. This post credit scene we got Cap, Steve, uh, you know, Cap, Sam, and Bucky. They catch a bucket in his abandoned garage or warehouse. Something about like I think it was something about calling you know Stan wants to call Tony. Something about Sam brings up about like something about the, the was it the, the Sokovian Accord is not going to help him. You see Bucky, you know he, I think he's handcuffed. We haven't saw Bucky since uh, Winter Soldier, and th that movie is setting up. Um, yeah, this movie was setting up also. Yeah, two movies. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp, and also Civil War. That'll be the net, the first movie of Phase Three of the MCU. Um, it kind of closed out Phase Two, and yeah, you know, um, yeah, seeing Bucky. I didn't saw it at the time. Like I said, I didn't see the movie at the time. You know, I saw just I saw the trailer for uh, you know uh, Civil War, but I saw the post credit again, and you see Bucky, you know, tied up. You know, look, you know, he's got look, look, he's in this abandoned garage. You know, it, you could tell it's playing the seeds of civil, yeah, civil war. And also, Louis tells uh, Scott in the end that uh, Salmon's looking for him. And yeah, it's playing, yeah, it's playing the seeds of civil war because, you know, you want, to see, yeah, you, you see Sky again in civil war in that airport fight, between, yeah, the airport fight between Steven and his team, you know, Captain America's team and Iron Man's team, you know, with um, with fucking Spider Man and Black Panther. You know, we have to wait until, uh, Civil War, so... Anyway, um... I think that's... Yeah, nothing else to talk about. It's not really, like, a great... It's nothing to talk about. Like I said, it's just a standard superhero movie. You know, I think it's good cast, uh, choice of, you know, with My Michael Douglas and Paul Rudd, Corey Stoll, um... Evelyn... Evel Evangeline, uh, Lily... You know, it's just set up like two movies going into phase three of the MCU. So yeah, my rating for this movie, I'll give it a three stars. I think because by the way, um, the start of this week, I'm gonna do you know my ratings of those movies because I just covered all six movies of the MCU. You know that is um, Iron Man three, Thor two, Captain America two, Guardians of the Galaxy two. Uh, sorry, uh, you know, uh, not Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Avengers 2, and Ant-Man, so six movies, so that'll be on Wednesdays, stay tuned for that, so yeah, I covered the final movie of Phase 2, the MCU, hope you enjoy my review of Ant-Man, uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash the like button, and subscribe to the Central Man Network on YouTube. Next week, um, like I said, on Wednesday, uh, midweek, I'm reviewing, I'm doing the ra ranking the MCU movies from Phase Two, best to worst. And then next week, I'm reviewing the first movie of Phase Three of the MCU, that is Captain America Three: Civil War. Can't wait for that. You know, this is Essential Man officially signing out. Check you later. And by the way, um, oh yeah, um, yeah. Before I'm gonna say it again, and also. I can't wait for the sequel. Yeah, the sequel of Ant-Man uh, 3, or, you know, Ant-Man the Wasp. You can call it Ant-Man the Wasp, but I'm going to call it Ant-Man 3. The title of the next Ant-Man is called Quantitania. That'll be released in 2022. Can't wait. I, this is, I don't think it's a TV show. That's more, I think it's better off as a movie than a TV show. That's just me. So, anyway, for the, for the second time, like, share, subscribe. Check you later.